involved with an exciting new project regarding uh, wine and candles and how you've kind of combined those two passions. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Candles was my passion for a long time. And during quarantine, I decided to start my own candle line called Aromasthesia, which combines my love of aromatherapy and anesthesia. And then I combined my love of candles and wine. So we're being very green. We are taking the bottles after we've drank the wine, cutting off the top, um, polishing the glass, and then pouring wax into it. So we call it a wine bottle candle. That's a mouthful. Um, but, but you know, we're recycling the glass. It's being used again, and people are sending me bottles that they have drunk, drank, I don't know, um, <laughs> on uh, s special occasions. And then I fill those with wax, and they can sort of keep that around as a sentimental item. So you can do that as a, as a custom project then? Yes, you can send me your empty bottles, and I will fill it with your choice of scent of wax, and then send it back to you, and you can, you know, savor it and have it in your living room as a conversation piece like that. Do you have an example that you can show us? I do. I have one back here that's burning. Okay. So this, this you is hold lit. It? Yeah, it's lit. <laughs> um, so this is from a bottle of wine that we actually consumed and then we sabered off the top of it and then poured in wax. And I have a special scent that we call Cabernet that actually kind of smells like Cabernet. Or people can choose from any of my 18 other aromasthesia scents and fill that. So this was custom ordered by someone and they chose a scent called Citrus Vanilla. You wanna smell? Oh yeah. Very it's good, nice, right? Yeah. To me that looks like a Jeroboam or a three liter. Yeah, I think this is three liter. That's a lot of wax. This baby's gonna burn for a long time. And for those of you who are concerned, it has two wicks because apparently how many wicks a candle has is a very, very important topic that I just recently learned about. It was recently brought to my attention that apparently there is a battle going on on the Real Housewives of Potomac where Wendy made a one wick candle and then Karen made like a three wick candle. And then Wendy came back and made like a five and seven and nine wick candle. And I was like, oh my God, how big is your nine wick candle? Because this is three liters almost of wax and I only put in two wicks. I'm feeling very inadequate in my wick game right now. I feel like um, I should have put more wicks in here. But you know, the more wicks you have, the faster your wax burns. And also, I want to know all about all these wicks that we're talking about, if they're being trimmed properly because my number one pet peeve about candle usage is that people don't trim their wicks. Like this, this is way too long, way too long. You gotta trim it so that it's about an eighth of an inch before you light it. Oh my God, this is an impromptu plug for my Aromasthesia candle wick cutter, yours for the um, small price of $22. Um, so here, and also the, the packaging is very good. I'm very into you know nice packaged things. So it has a magnetic closure, see? Okay, so, um, oh, you teach me about wine, I'll teach you about candles. Absolutely, yeah. Are you ready for some wick trimming lessons? So you just take a wick trimmer and take to a candle. So an eighth of an inch is really not very much then. It should be very, very close to the candle. Yes, yes. An eighth to a fourth, we'll say. We'll, we'll leave some wiggle room. Um, but definitely not like half an inch or an inch. And people are burning these candles. And so when the wick is um, tall, it emits more soot. And so if you ever see a um, candle that somebody has and the inner rim of the glass has um, black soot on it, we call that the circle of shame. That means that you were improperly burning your candle and then the soot was accumulating around. So if you burn a candle correctly, at the end, when it's all gone, the inside of the glass should still be clear, no soot. Okay. Yes. And so is that something that you have to do after every use? It's like um, you should burn a candle also for about three to four hours because if you don't burn it where the, the wax pools all the way to the end, you'll start this phenomenon called tunneling. So it won't burn and then you only burn it for an hour and then it burns only in the center. So you want to burn it until the wax reaches the end of your vessel and then you can blow it out. And okay. then every time before you relight it, you have to trim the wick. Got it. See? 
Candle burning is so complicated. I had no idea. And you thought you just lit a candle, but no. All you have to trim the wick, make sure it's proper burning time, you know, keep away from children and pets, all of those things. So now it's ready to go? So now it's ready to go.